Um, okay, uh, my name is Sandor Katz. I'm 46 years old. Um, uh, I am a, a writer. Uh, I've written a couple of books about fermented foods. I do a lot of teaching and a lot of gardening and um, helping to um, keep this place, uh, Shore Mountain Sanctuary, together. Um, Shore Mountain Sanctuary started in 1973, so uh, last year we passed our 35th anniversary. Uh, it was a group of um, hippies um, from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, um, bought the land in 1973. Um, with the intention of starting a community. And a couple of years later, this, uh, this guy Milo, who I consider the figure of continuity in the Shore Mountain story, um, found, him, found himself uh, living alone. Everybody else had bailed, and uh, he was living alone with a herd of goats and one cow. And he was going through a coming out process and started uh, putting notices in some uh, gay and lesbian uh, media that he was looking for uh, other gay and lesbian folks to come be on the land with him. And then he ended up going to one of the early radical fairy gatherings uh, in Arizona or somewhere like that and invited people uh, from there to come here. So it had an evolution in the late 70s into a predominantly lesbian and gay community. And and in 1981, it reconstituted as Short Mountain Sanctuary Incorporated, a not-for-profit corporation that took over the ownership of the land from the original group of hippies who bought it in 1973. And so it's been running as a uh, as Short Mountain Sanctuary, as a, uh, a queer, spa safe space uh, since around 1981. Well, there's about, uh, okay, there are about 16 people who live here. Um, although the number's always fluctuating a little bit, uh, lots of different things happen here. I mean, we have beautiful gardens, we keep goats and chickens and bees, uh, you know, a certain amount of what we do has to do with food production, you know, we have beautiful buildings, we maintain all our, our own infrastructure, all, our only electricity is solar electricity, uh, our water systems we have created and maintain um, on our own. Uh, we host uh, as many as 600 people at a time here, so we uh, uh, you know, we host festivals, uh, educational events, um, uh, spiritual events. Um, so lots of things go on here. This is really sort of a, like a meeting grounds for this sort of like a, a, um, a subculture that's spread all over the place. We get, uh, we get visitors from, um, you know, from different continents and from all over the United States. Um, but you know, the ongoing residential community is a small group of people and our daily activities you know, mostly have to do with you know, chopping wood, carrying water, and creating food. Okay, I mean for, you know, for, a handful of people, um, you know, this is home. This is this is where you know where they live and uh, you know where they return to when they go away. But then we've also been um, a, a magnet for um, a, a, an extended community of neighbors. Like we, we you know we we've been a draw for many people to move to this area. So uh, at another level, this is the place where uh, an extended community of neighbors and friends, uh, you know, come together. Um, and then at a larger level, there are these, um, you know, sort of hundreds of people who come to our, uh, to, who come to our gatherings, um, for whom this place is like a, kind of like a sacred retreat space where they, uh, you know, come to recharge um, and, uh, and, and relax and, you know, maybe reconnect with, um, uh, you know, something that they feel like is is not present in their, um, you know, in their in, in their daily lives. So I so I, you know I think that this this place has sort of become, uh, you know, sort of like a. I mean, sacred space, um, you know, like a symbol of, of, of like some things that people would like to have more of in their lives, but because of all the pressures that they have in their lives, like they're, they're, they're not able to. So, you know, I think that this place carries really, um, you know, lots of meaning in the, you know, in the hearts and minds of, uh, you know, lots of people, um, uh, you know, who are geographically dispersed, you know, as, as, as well as for the people who, who, who are here. But, but this place is, you know, bigger than the people who are calling it home and, um, you know, has, has, has uh, a lot of meaning for a lot of people who live far away. You know, I think, 
This community is very unusual in that, um, you know, it's primarily, um, um, you know, sort of queer folks creating a very, uh, you know, queer friendly community. And mostly, you know, queer communities are found in big cities. And I mean, you know, there are, uh, you know, little children who, um, um, you know, like don't really necessarily fit into, um, you know, uh, uh, normative uh, uh, gender roles everywhere. But when, you know, when, the, when, when kids grow up in rural areas like that, they mostly get out as soon as they can and they go to the cities where they can sort of like, you know, find a, um, you know, sort of uh, supportive culture where they can, they can be themselves. And one of the things that I think is really um, unusual and exciting about what, we, what, what we've been creating here is, um, you know, this sort of thriving pocket of queer culture in a um, you know fairly remote rural area um, and so you know I think that's what gives rise to this scene that you found kind of startling is you know you had like you know drag queens and you know people dressing up and you know kind of things you wouldn't be shocked to see in a nightclub in a big city but like you know it's a scene that you might see in a nightclub uh, in in a big city you know uh, um, you know transposed you know onto um, you know like a like a beautiful wooded area with all of these crazy yellow daffodils. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 exciting what we're what we're creating here, and it's really um, unusual and unique, and um, um, you know, un uncharted territory perhaps in certain ways, but but it's exciting. Um. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the most challenging things about living in community are the same things I think as all people trying to live in community. It's like, you know, about dishes and, um, you know, people's expectations of other people's commitment, um, you know, to different pro I mean, the, you know, the, the real problems we have day to day have like nothing to do with like being queer and just everything to do with what, you know, groups of people have to work out with each other when they're trying to share resources and, 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 and share space. Um, yeah, I mean, we have to contend with like you know a little bit of, um, of 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 homophobia, but you know not really, no more than you know any of us you know have had to contend with in in our lives in other places um, before. You know, for the most part, you know, people are very polite here, and even to the degree that they might not like who we are or what they perceive that we are, it's very rare that people say anything about it. <laughs> So, um, so it's, I mean, it's, it's been all right. I mean, you know, we, 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 we actually end up, you know, getting to be friendly with quite a few of our neighbors and, um, 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 you know, ha haven't really experienced, um, you know, a whole lot of, um, homophobia. We've had, a, you know, occasional incidents, but, um, you know, nothing, nothing too remarkable. So basically like the way the way that our community is structured is with a minimum of structure. Um, uh, you know, there's certain things like taking care of the animals, like we need for somebody to take that on every day. So we have a sign up system for that. But for most things, it's much more informal. The people who garden will typically coordinate with each other and try to, you know, find times when, when we can like collaborate and, and, and work on projects together. But, you know, we don't have any kind of work quota or anything like that. We have an ethic of like, you know, don't do it if you don't want to do it. Um, you know, we encourage people to, we encourage everybody to get involved. But um, we leave it to you know each person to decide what calls it, what you know what kind of uh, work calls out to them, um, and you know some people love to clean, some people love to build, some people love to garden, some people well nobody right now loves to take care of the vehicles. Um. <laughs> Um, but you know, but it works out, and you know, sometimes sometimes the standards are higher, and sometimes the standards are lower. Um, but uh, but it works out. Yeah, we all pitch in money for food. Um, we have a we have a meeting every week, which will be later this afternoon, where we you know try to coordinate things that are going on and. Um, you know, make sure two people aren't planning to use the truck for different things on the same morning, and you know, just 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 coordinate, plan things like that. And uh, you know, we people always toss around you know ideas for cottage industries so that there would be more work for people who come here to plug into. But the but what you know the flip side of that is then there'd be labor quotas. You know, if there's like an industry we're trying to maintain for everyone to plug into, then we lose what one of the things that people find one of the most charming aspects of this place, that there's, you know, sort of no specific demands being made on anybody's time.
the dynamics have shifted. I mean, the biggest thing that's shifted in the 16 years that I've been living here is this whole extended community that's drawn together around us. So when I first moved here, it was just the people who were living right here and a few, you know, random neighbors in the area. But, you know, now there's like, you know, we have 50 people within a 20 minute drive who've moved here to be part of this. So we have a much larger circle of people who are coming together here and a much, you know, when people show up here um, enchanted with the idea of living here, it's not necessarily just living here at the sanctuary, but there's this whole, you know, there's all these other possibilities and we're sort of a port of entry for people, um, you know, sort of, um, considering a much wider range of living situations, so that that that's a huge thing that's uh, that, that that's changed in the social dynamic dynamic in the time that I've been here.